Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in the studio of our digital network, uh, SSC Live TV. And uh, I thank you for being with me all week as we started the first full week of Powerful Points to Ponder, spending meaningful moments with the Master, looking at a great man of faith whose name was Caleb, who had a can-do attitude. Now, he had to coexist with 10 men who had a can't-do attitude. And uh, it was regarding whether or not the children of Israel should move into the Promised Land. Once they were delivered from Egyptian slavery uh, by, through Moses, God <clears throat> took them directly to the Promised Land uh, in 18 months. And now they're on the outskirts of the Promised Land, and Moses has sent 12 spies from each of the 12 tribes to go and do a reconnaissance of the land to determine the vulnerabilities of the land. And they come back, the 12 come back and give a report to the people. They have evidence of the futility, the, excuse me, the fertility of the land because they're carrying grapes on a stick. The sticks are so, the grapes are so huge that it takes two men to carry those grapes on the stick. But there was one challenge. There are giants in the land. Anytime you have opportunities, you will have obstacles. Anytime you have advancement, you will have uh, ad adversity. Anytime you want some grapes, you're going to have some giants because the giants want them grapes as well. And so we are told that Caleb said we can do it. Numbers chapter 13 verse 30 says this. <clears throat> it says, Caleb silenced the people who were complaining against Moses and said, we should attack now and take the land. We are strong enough to conquer it. We can do it. Well, listen to the people. The ten spies. Verse uh, says, but the men who had gone with Caleb said, no, we are not strong enough to attack them. The people there are more powerful than we are. And when God heard them say this, because the people had voted, put it up to a democratic vote, and the people said, agreed with the 10, we can't do it. <clears throat> and that just goes to show you that whether you believe you can or you believe, whether you believe you can't, it's true, because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Tell yourself you can't, you can't. Tell yourself that you can, you can. Notice what God says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 20. <clears throat> it says, the Lord answered, I will forgive them as you have asked, Moses. But I promise that as surely as I live and as surely as my presence fills the earth, none of these people will live to enter that land. They have seen the dazzling light of my presence and the miracles that I performed in Egypt. God performed miracles to get these people out of Egypt. They've seen it. Uh, uh, and performed in Egypt and in the wilderness. For 18 months, God fed them manna and quail fell down from the sky, water comes out of a rock, all of this. But they have tried my patience over and over again and refused to obey me. I told them to go in and they won't do it. So since they won't obey me, I'm not going to take them in. They will never enter the, the land which I promised to their ancestors. They underlive. Don't underlive because you don't have faith. None of those who have rejected me will ever enter it. But because my servant Caleb has a different attitude, 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 and has remained loyal to me, I will bring him into the land which he explored, and his descendants will possess the land. So, Caleb, we're told, had a different attitude. They all, was, they all had limited ability. But with God, ability is not the key thing. Attitude is. Ability asked, always asks the question, can I? Attitude asks the question, will I? And God wants us to have a willing spirit. Attitude is critical. Attitude determines three things. Attitude determines three things. Attitude determines, number one, who you attract in your life. Who you attract. For example, if you constantly attract negative people, it's probably because you have a negative attitude. Because attitude determines who you attract. Attitude also determines what you will approach. I'm not going into that. I'm not going to approach that promised land uh, because there are giants in the land. That's what the tent said. Caleb said, I'm going into the promised land because God is with me in the promised land. And your attitude determines what you should approach. So many things, so many um, things we should have approached a long time ago, but we don't approach them because we have an attitude 
uh, of, of fear and not an attitude of faith. Attitude determines who you attract. Attitude determines what you approach. Attitude determines what you achieve. That's not to minimize hard work. That's not to minimize the importance of justice. But if you can have justice and you can have hard work, but if you don't first start off with an attitude that says we can do it by the grace of God, you never will do it. Well, remember what the people, what they said. They said there are giants in the land. And so they disinherited themselves. They never get to the promised land. And for 45 years, <clears throat> Caleb had to watch each one of the people who said we couldn't do it. The whole nation just die. You're talking about a funeral. Everybody who left out of Egypt with Moses died in the wilderness except two people, Caleb and Joshua. And under Joshua, the children of Israel will cross over the Jordan River and enter into a promised land that they should have had 40 years earlier. So they conquered, they, 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 they cross over after 40 years, Caleb and Joshua, it takes them five years to drive out the inhabitants of the land. And then after they drive out the inhabitants of the land, 40 years to get there. And that's crazy because it only should have taken a, really a couple of months. But it took them 18 months to get there. And now it's going to take them 40 years to get there, which only should have taken a few days. Really, it was a few days. Excuse, not a few months, but a few days to get there in a camel caravan back in those days. And now Caleb is 85 years old. And he goes to Moses and says to Moses, uh, I want you to give me the land, the hill country, that I should have got 45 years ago, but these whiners said we couldn't do it. And he said, and it's on his birthday, by the way, when he's talking to Moses, he said, I'm just as strong now at 85 as I was at 40. You know why? Because when you trust God, God will keep the promises for the person. God kept that promise for the person, and then God kept the person for the promise. So God kept Caleb for 45 years. God will keep the promise for the person and the person for the promise. And he's just as strong, and he says, give me this land, and the land that he was able to get that he should have got 40 something years ago was Hebron. And he got that land because he believed the Lord was with them. Now, here's the great tragedy as I close. The reason why they didn't go in 45 years ago is because these 10 spies came back and they said, and in the name of this message, by the way, this final message in this series is where do you find most of your giants? Where do you find most of your giants? And here's the interesting point about the whole story. 45 years earlier, they came back and told the nation of Israel, the people, that there were, everybody was a giant. Everybody was a giant. But when they get over to the promised land, according and, and conquer the promised land, and he gets Hebron, Josh, Caleb gets Hebron. We are told in Joshua chapter 15, verse 14, please look at this. From Hebron, that's what he gets. Remember I told you, he gets Hebron. From Hebron, which is the best land. Should have had it earlier, but he's got it. Because God preserves the promise or the blessing for the person and then preserves the person for the blessing. God preserves the blessing for the person and the person for the blessing. He should have got it. 45 years ago, but it doesn't matter because God has preserved Caleb as though time stood still for Caleb. God is able to do that. From Hebron, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Sheshai, Ahaman, and Talmai, the sons of Anak. In other words, they didn't go in 45 years earlier because they said everybody was a giant. But according to to Joshua 15, there were only three giants. Three giants. Everybody was not a giant, but they told the people, everybody's a giant. 
and there was only three giants there. Oh my God. And everybody knows about giants. Giants are slow. That's why Goliath got beat, because giants can't fight if you keep moving. And if you keep moving, your giants can't do anything to you. If you just keep on moving, because giants are slow. Which means, where were the giants? The giants were not in the land because there was only three of them. So where were the giants? The giants was in their mind. And so many times the giants are in our minds. And we project on the situations, giants that are not there because they're in our mind. You are transformed by the renewing of your mind. I saw a documentary in which these hunters had uh, removed a trap from a cougar. And the cougar had the trap uh, on, its, on its leg, and the hunters moved the trap. They got some wire that they put around the neck of the cougar and got a board to keep the cougar on the other side of the board so the cougar wouldn't bite them. And once they got the leg underneath that board, they unleashed the trap, and the cougar was free to go. But when they moved the board and took the pole, which had the wire around the neck, took it off his neck, guess what that cougar did? It just stood there. It just stayed there, laid down there growling, arr, arr, laid down there growling. And the reason it, it laid down there growling, and in, in spite of the fact that the, the, the hunters kept on saying, move, go, 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 move, throwing rocks at him, trying to get that cougar to go back to its habitat, go back to its family. The reason the cougar didn't move was because although the trap had been removed from the cougar's ankle, the trap had not been removed from the cougar's mind. And if the, the cougar thought it couldn't do it, the cougar thought that it could not move, not because it was on its ankles, but because it's on his mind. And the devil likes to get in your mind and tell you you can't have certain things, you can't be certain things, you can't do things, certain things. You'll never see certain things come to pass in your life. The devil is a liar. Not only can you do it, not only can you be it, not only can you see it come to pass, but according to my Bible, it is God can do exceedingly above what you are able to ask or think. Everybody there was not a giant, there was just three, but if in your mind you think everybody's a giant, then you're defeated by the way that you think. And even if everybody was a giant, if God be for us, who then can be against us? So in this new year that God has given to us, a year of possibilities, a year of a new administration, a year in which Everybody's thinking about social justice and everybody's thinking about racism and this will continue. The protest and the advocacy will continue and we should continue to be vigilant in protesting for justice for the American descendants of slavery and marginalized people. But while we're doing that, dream, don't dread, dream big what God would have you to do and don't let those giants that get in your mind cause you to underlive the life God has planned for you. Let's pray together. Our Lord, we thank you for this week of walking with Caleb because we've all been Caleb at times, and then we've all been like those 10 spies who say we can't. Move us from dread to dreams. Move us from I can't, we can't, to I can because God can. And bless your people, O oh God, to arrive at their destination, the places that you want us to be. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and another year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us this week on another powerful point to ponder. And I'm excited about tomorrow Sunday service and uh, 
My God, we're going to have a wonderful worship experience. I hope you'll join us tomorrow in worship uh, at SSC Live, St. Stephen Church, SSC Live TV. So you make sure you join us. And if you don't have a church home, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You can do it right now. Email us. You need a church home. Email us. Become a digital disciple wherever you are across this country. Connect with us. We'd love to have you. We're going to continue to help you to grow and, uh, and to help you become what God wanted you to become. So contact us here at St. Stephen Church, uh, New Start, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you. Thank you for a great and exciting week as we journey with this bad man, Caleb. And as we close, don't forget what we say every day during COVID-19. Stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. See you in church tomorrow. God bless you.